I wanted to talk about branding and culture, right? You guys hear me talk about it in many other videos, many episodes. You guys even probably seen Carlo before on one of our cleaning and cocktails episode where we talked about branding and culture. But I was like, hey, you know what? Let's bring the audience to where the magic happens, right? Because you guys very well know the cleaning industry is very competitive. We have to figure out ways to stand out in other ways than just a proposal or just a price. How do you recognize your brand? How do you create a brand identity? First and foremost, it starts by picking the right people to partner with. So Carlo with Culture Studio, this is our go-to. This is who we go to for all of our merchandise, all of our uniforms. So Carlo, take it away. In a nutshell, Culture Studio is a merchandise company and we work with brands from whether it's cleaning services or any kind of service-based industry, uh, all the way up to the music industry, which is our, our bread and butter. Uh, we create, design, implement, and produce really awesome merch. Culture means a lot to us and that goes into the product, that goes into the people. So. We'll tap into a little bit of that. And then of course we'll talk branding and as Ricky likes to call it, swag. It's a little bit of the uh, chocolate factory, but in a t-shirt format. So it'll be the Willy Wonka of t-shirts, if you will. It doesn't matter what business you're in. As a small business, you've grown from somewhere to be where you're at today. You've scaled, you've implemented processes. This is a good example of an entrepreneurship success story. Entrepreneurship doesn't have just one face. Entrepreneurship is stories like this. So. I'm excited to have you guys here. Carlo, let's take a walk around. Let's do it. Let's start over here. We're just gonna give you a, a quick, uh, you know, a five cent tour that I like to, to call it. Everyone here is uh, working with top brands, engaging, prospecting, reaching out, a little proactive on the sales side. Really the order starts here with the customer. We're engaging customers, doing product pitches, you know, identifying the ideal customer profile. Uh, all starts in this area right here and kind of leads us through the life of an order. You guys think of as business owners, when you start to build a team of customer service, of people that are speaking to your clients, right? Customer success, client success. This is what like the brand coordinator department relates to in the cleaning industry. We give Carlo and the team some ideas of what we're looking for, but then they really just bring it to life. These are the professionals we should look to, to help create a brand for our business. Cool, we'll keep moving. This is something that we, we put up on the wall, the core values, uh, and something that we look at, I would say yearly, making sure that we're still aligned. You know, it's, it's nothing that someone needs to memorize by any means. It's not something that like, you have to go up to someone, hey, do you know our core values? <laughs> and like put them on the spot. That's not what this is. It's really just a guideline of how we make decisions. It's like, it makes sense. Like there's no, there's no question on why we need to do things because it all ties to the core values of, of the company. It's extremely important. Think about, you, us as business owners, we have our own core values, right? We have our mission, we have our, our vision as, as a business owner, or you should, and you start to share it with the team as your team begins to get bigger and grow. You know, why not look for that in the partners that you're choosing to do business with, to grow your business? And it, just ma it just makes for a good working relationship, to be honest. Yeah. If you don't put an address inside of map and in, inside of your maps app, then you don't end up going anywhere. If you say, this is where I'm going, here's our intentional growth, then you end up all going on the same path. So again, a really good tool to align, align the organization. As you walk in the door, Carlo, it says, welcome to Culture Lab. Boom. Can you like elaborate who, who thought of that? Uh, you'd have to be a screen printing nerd from our industry to really connect culture land. But uh, this is pretty much a tribute to who we think was one of the greatest screen printing companies that started this music industry trend uh, called Winterland. And that was a San Francisco based company that did massive tours in the 90s. Number one, this is culture land. This is our land and, and we can implement our culture in our world here. But number two, a tribute to Winterland as well. So right here is our finance room. I call it kind of the shark tank, if you will, to go and collect receivables. But what we're trying to do here is you can see these boxes, we're filing this stuff away. Get away from paper invoices. Get away from these paper type of processes. And we're, we're trying to do the same thing here. I wanted to showcase that as like that. It's going back into the ancient archives, if you will. We got to switch it up to go digital. Which you guys know with Route, we always say ditch the pen and paper. There you go. Shameless plug. That was a shameless plug. <laughs> we just kind of made a wall of fame of all the artists that we've worked with, um, from Elton John to Black Sabbath, Guns N' Roses. I can keep name dropping all day, but you see them behind me. It's a uh, really, really great high quality artwork. 
Over here, these are the, the brand coordinators slash account managers slash heartbeat of the company is what I call them. Working with Ricky or the brands that we have, we always connect them to a brand coordinator that starts to really understand their brand and uh, can pitch products. This is the, the department that's always serving new ideas. And then the creatives of the world. This is the art department where your ideas come to life. And this is really where um, we, get to, we get to be creative with artwork and logos and start pitching different products. Everyone may have an art department and relate that to your business, but what is it that your art department does that is different? And for us, it's going above and beyond and understanding the brand. It's actually picking up the phone and calling that brand and saying, you know what, whatever you chose, what, what you wanted to go with, it's not gonna look right. And here's a suggestion. Actually having that interaction and tapping into the brand is something that this department does and so do all the other departments. Think about when we're, again, so busy on the day-to-day -day with the operations we're running, this is why you rely on a partner like this. This is tough when you try to do it on your own. You know, just Google searching, trying to think you could pick a cheap garment out and pick this brand and copy and paste. I mean, it's just not the way to go if you want to look at yourself like a professional brand and really to start to compare yourself to the bigger companies in our space you team up with, with people like this, right? To do to make it look like you have a team behind you. Here's a way to, again, elevate and leverage partners to take what you can do personally, but then let them take it from there and really take it to the finish line. Because we're not even talking about the shipping and delivery and garment. Like we're about to get to all that right now where that's another beast. A whole another beast, definitely. You got production, you got ink mixing system, you got inside tag, finishing, fulfillment, the way you set up your shop. The footprint is extremely important. In, back out. In the warehouse video I've shown you guys before where vehicle comes in, drops off supplies, supplies get taken to the, to the laundry area, towels and mop heads get laundered. It's a big U, right? That's a perfect example. A big U. Create, even if you have a small space or even if it's your apartment or anywhere that it is, create a flow chart in your in your area of business for the supplies and for the equipment because back here is kind of what the supply equipment area would look like for a cleaning business this is where we schedule production everything is ran through our proprietary system that we created we're looking at capacity we're looking at quantity and volume that all gives us a decision to see what press it goes on and what we can produce for the day we're thinking of supply costs labor costs equipment costs parking overhead, itemize different things, it's happening here too. So again, everything's relatable when we're, we're talking about running a business, processes, protocols. So I figured we'll walk back here and show you the ink mixing system. The inks are created here, but this is a cool system that we implemented. It's kind of like when you go to Home Depot and you pick your ink or your paint color, whatever your PMS color, your logo colors are, we input them in the system and it'll give us a formula for your certain blue, for your certain green, for your certain red. It busts out the formula based on how much we need to produce the amount of volume that we have. So then we go to press, we utilize just what we need. On the cleaning side, think about chemicals. You gotta dilute appropriately so you know how to purchase for that account. So then you're, again, you're not, it's a, it's a pennies business, dollars matter. This is a great way. I mean, you guys are automating this. It's all about implementing the process first having the ideology of saving on waste and knowing that you want to reduce the waste that you have, you can do that manually. You don't have to have this beautiful, expensive machine, but doing that first and then getting to this point, it's like you've already built that culture of mitigating waste. You've already built that culture of being efficient. And when you get to this really nice shiny object, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so more machinery, more capacity, if you will. We got ourselves a floor scrubber here. Floor scrubber, got to keep it clean. Factory cat. For us, tour activity has completely halted last year. 2020, zero tour activity. So in essence, Culture Studio should have shut their doors. But back to the culture of innovating and progressing and pushing forward, we started to adapt new technologies and new uh, services, really. So we're getting onto the print on demand world. POD, which means one of one, one garment, one t-shirt. It has its risks and also has its rewards, but what it is is it, it, the industry is evolving and we want to be right there with the with the change. So Carl, let me ask you this then, because I know for, for a lot of us cleaning business owners, sometimes we only need to print 10 shirts. Yeah. So th this is a solution. That's the solution. For us not yeah. worrying about 
you know, well, I'm not big enough to order from a company like this, or I don't order that much, that's okay, because you guys are, there's solutions to that. Exactly, so this is to, to capitalize on less volume one-offs, but even better, tying it to technology is, have you guys have company stores? So let's say Route has a company store where you can buy a hat, a t-shirt, a hoodie. We can do direct integration into that Shopify account. And when someone purchases one of one, it goes to print one of one on demand. No more inventory, no more upfront cost, on demand production. So this is awesome. This is, yeah. It's like a full blown printer. It brings value. It pushes you into a new market that you know you're evolving to one way or another. But then it's also, what's the ROI? You know, it's a thousand dollar machine, a hundred thousand dollar machine, whatever the price is, do your calculations. How fast do I pay this off? These upfront costs may scare all of us as business owners when we first start off. How can I spend 10 G's on a floor cleaner? How can I, how can I double down and spend 20,000 on this? What's the ROI? What can you sell it for? How fast are you gonna pay it back? So you guys think about this on, you know, robotics, the floor, the floor scrubbers, the micro scrubber, all these automated tools that are coming into our industry. At first people were scared, but this is where you gotta embrace it, right? Because you could work alongside this piece of equipment, invest the money, create yourself time to be productive in other areas and allow equipment like this to help supplement you as a business owner and the service offering that you have. So we've got to embrace it. We can't be scared of technology because it's here. It's coming. It's been here. Everybody, every industry has to adapt to technology. Yeah, you know, one thing I want to touch, there's nothing sexy, interesting, or cool about inventory. <laughs> nothing, zero, but it is so important. I mean, there is a massive amount of inventory that we hold. The important note that I want to touch on there is you got to know where stuff is. And if your system can allocate, put it in lots, keep it organized for you, the efficiency pickup is insane. Extremely important to stay organized and have systems for that. As small or as big as you are in your warehouse, in your office, having a check-in and check-out system, right? For all the supplies that come. What did you order this box of chemicals for? It's, it's dollars. This is money that sits on the shelves. So just know where it's going. Account for it. It's all, it systems, systems. I'm just taking you down. Uh, for us, it's, it's called the lane of fulfillment. This is all automatic folding machines. Individually fold, size strip, poly bag, puts it right into a poly bag and heat seals it. We could do somewhere around a thousand pieces an hour. So as you guys are walking around, I, I, I think you guys could see innovation at its finest, right? Like it, it's crazy. I did not realize how much goes into a shirt, a t-shirt. This yeah. shirt that I printed, yeah. it's insane. But that's, that's the beauty of classic industries is innovation, right? Us in the cleaning space, in the service-based industry in general, you guys are manufacturing. These are the industries that are set to be disrupted by innovation, and you're seeing it. We're looking at a machine that just folds the shirts. I think I'm gonna have the team look at if I could get this just to fold my microfiber wraps. Exactly. Uh, and it's all about efficiency. It's like, you can do this manually, which we all started, manually folding out uh, well, 200, 300 pieces an hour. And you can continue doing that, but if you wanna scale that service and really make a volume impact, you go from 300 pieces manually to 1,000 pieces manually. Now your cost can come down a little bit. You can charge a little bit less because your efficiency's picked up. You can get a little more competitive on your pricing. So on the cleaning side, guys, think about when they're, their metric on production and performance is how many units they can produce in a month. Think about that in our, in our industry of how much square feet we can clean in a month, right? How, many, how much square feet we could get done in an hour. What does that do for us? That equals production rate. So again, I just wanna, I like taking things that we're learning from here, one side, one business, to bring it to our business and see how we can relate things. Because at the end of the day, this is all business ownership. This is all processes of building and scaling your business, whether you're small, medium, big. And then it starts to get a little quieter over here because we're going into the uh, shipping department where everything gets boxed up and labeled and really gets ready to go out the door. Quality control is extremely important right at the end. And I give a lot of respect to the shipping department because usually this is the last line of defense. The quality control is so important because even if you do catch that mistake here, at least you caught it here before it got to the customer. You don't want your customer to be the quality control. 
even if you put the wrong label, let's catch that before it goes out the door. And yes, we pissed everybody off. And yes, we made mistakes. At least the customer isn't sending you to the picture. Hey man, you were supposed to clean these floors and the, and the counters, they can't be your quality control check. Yeah. There's no coming back. It's really hard to ask for forgiveness when you get to that point. That's a great point right there is think about it. When you've done all the work that you did and you didn't check your work or somebody didn't inspect and your client comes and sees it, they literally, because this has happened many times, you did a great job everywhere. You forgot that garbage can or you forgot to wipe down an area, they're gonna judge you on that. So again, quality control. I, I can't stress it enough. Inspect, inspect, inspect. Because if your client ends up being the one that inspecting, you're not gonna have that client for too much longer. Yeah. And you gotta have the culture of quality too. And we keep talking about volume and accounts and all that, great KPIs. But if that's all that matters, someone's gotta talk about quality as well. If volume and quality align, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You have to have a culture of quality as well. Yeah. Boom. Check your platform. Drop it. Culture and branding oozed out of this place as we walked through it. That's why I thought it'd be a, just a perfect episode for the audience, for everybody part of Route Nation, part of the cleaning nation, to just see, you know, it really doesn't matter if, if this was a cleaning business or not. It's a business that had processes. It's a business that had systems. It's a business that had different departments that all had one mission and one goal was to deliver a product, right? Deliver a product for their customer. Just like in our industry, we're trying to deliver the best service we can for our clients. Carlo, I just want to thank you for taking us behind the scenes. I mean, we drop nuggets all day. Thank yep. you so much for your time. I mean, you know, send us off, man. Absolutely, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity to even uh, work with you guys on the brand side and, uh, and opening up our shop so you guys can see, as Ricky mentioned, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in, especially when you're coming to a service-based industry. There are a lot, a lot of similarities, a lot of things that connect, but there is no one size fits all. I think everything changes and everyone has their own thing that works for them. Uh, when it comes to branding, that's, that's what we do best. That's what we have a passion about. And I think that's important too. You gotta have a passion, uh, not only as the business owners, but the staff and the people that you bring on. Uh, we say that we don't sell, we help the, uh, the clients. We, uh, we help them with their brand. And when you have a passion, a true interest in what it is that you're servicing and uh, that you're working on, it doesn't feel like a job, really, at the end of the day. It feels like you're helping and you're adding some type of values. You see how the companies that stand out, you can name hundreds of companies that you know them by their brand identity, and it's because their brand is their lifestyle. It's their passion. I can't say it enough, you know, I, I keep saying it. But again, the emphasis of this episode was branding, culture, and treat the cleaning industry, your business, like a lifestyle, guys. Until next time, thank you.